This is why you're stuck below 1000 ELO. In this video, we're going to be playing a few games in the 1000 ELO range so that you can learn. Also, I made an entire free course on how to get to 1000 ELO. I put a lot of hours into this, so if you want it, you can click the link in my description. You just have to put in your email and it gets sent straight to your email. And let us get into the video. Okay, we get the white pieces and of course, let's go E4. We are rated 999, which is practically 1000. We're just going to call it that. And okay, we get knight out to c6. This might be a little bit strange to you if you don't know what to see. And actually, I don't know what to do against this because I don't know the exact theory, but I understand that developing my knights, getting my bishops out. Okay, and my opponent's going for sort of a Scandinavian defense. Yeah, in this case, I believe I have to take because if I go bring my knight out to defend it, they can actually push the pawn. And that's not so comfortable because they push the pawn and it's like, Yucky. Uh, my knight gets hit, I have to go back, or I have to move around the board. Not fun. And if I push to d4, they can just take the pawn for free. So, here we're just going to play it like it is a Scandinavian defense. Okay, here we can develop our knight, sure. But, I like using this move later. Because it might prove useful later. If we're able to get a tempo. You know, we can do it now, we can do it later, it doesn't really matter. If you want to do this now, knight c3, I don't think that's a bad idea. Uh, but I also like getting castled as early as possible. Okay, opponent is a person who really likes to trade down the board, so this is going to be very interesting. Already, they've traded off an active piece. They let me develop a piece into the onto the board. You see, now a bishop is here. So you see, they moved their queen milli like way too many times. My king is castled. I have a piece out. They have their queen out and their knight out. So I think this is looking good for me. So okay, don't go for some. You don't need to attack the queen again. This is not what you need to do. You need to get your pieces out. This is what you need to do. Get your pieces out and develop. There it will be high there will be a time when you start attacking, but not yet. You need your pieces on the board if you want to start attacking. Okay. We get knight out to tf6 and uh, it does stop any ideas with this because that is free. Now, we can't play d4 cuz that simply hangs upon. So I'm not even considering it. Let's go with d3. A little bit more passive, but at the same time keeps a very nice structure that we can go into the middle middle game with. Now, you notice there is an idea with pinning the queen only if this knight is not here and there's not a pawn or a knight to block this. So there has to be a lot of conditions for this tactic to even work. So I'm not even going to try and force it. Uh, I developed my, my bishop. I'm hitting the knight. So there might be... Uh, oh, also... Yeah, I'm actually threatening to take, take... Not to go here because they can block with the pawn, but if they were to play a move like e5, I believe that is a blunder because we take the knight for free. Uh, okay, that's a move. Yeah, that's a move. Uh, I'm assuming they want to recapture with the queen, which is good. If they recapture the pawn, they blunder their queen. And again, we cannot go for this tactic because the knight is defending that square. So... And my knight's hit, I'm just going to give away my bishop, why not? Um, you know, there's a chance that he blunders the tactic, but I'm assuming my opponent played this for a reason, and it's not going to blunder it, but look, now we get a rook to the center, just making sure I'm not missing anything. Rook to the center. We have a check whenever we want to, but we don't need to give it. Remember, checks are only good uh, if it's a tactical, you know, sequence. Okay, my opponent goes, puts their knight in the center, and this is actually, I think this is a decent move. Now we can give a check. Knight takes, takes, queen takes, check, probably king to b8. Uh, and what, do we have anything there? No, it looks, honestly, this looks almost like it's going to be a draw. So, my, my bishop is under attack. Uh, I do have to move it, because I don't want him to take this and ruin my pawn structure. I could go here, which is an idea. And actually, I really like this, because the knight might become a target later on behind this bishop. Uh, and I like this, and we can maybe get our queen out at some point, whenever the time is available. So the queen has to keep guard over this knight, or the knight has to move, because we have a tactic here, winning a pawn. Um, already, I'm, I'm assuming what my opponent's going to do on the next move. I think they want to develop the bishop, so they're going to play e6. If they play e6, uh, I can't play d5, knight d5, well, because it hangs the knight. Okay, what else am I going to do? Uh, probably queen to... yeah, probably queen to d2 is what I'm going to do, so... They push their pawn to e6, queen d2, try to connect the rooks. You see, very simple, just trying to come up with a plan for the most obvious move. So I know what he's going to do. 
here and bring the rooks to the center. I don't see any threats. Oh, he can pin me. Hmm. So maybe here we go a3 to stop any weird pin that happens here. And he goes there. And now, there we go. All we have to do is play the move that we thought about while our, pon our opponent was thinking. So you see, we just saved time. So you see, I, I talked about going to d2 and I thought, you know, it's not the best because then he might get a bishop pin here. And that's not good. Objectively, this is fine. Le allowing the bishop pin is not the worst. But you see... Then this happens. So we are being attacked here on f. There's no fork here. You should understand that there's really nothing defending this pawn except the queen, and that's not a good defender here. Uh, how do we defend it? I think we can actually just go to... Okay. If we go here, our opponent has knight c4. Attacking your queen, our, opo our pawn cannot take because of this. Okay. So if we go here, knight c4, and we go here, then what? Well, then they win the pawn, actually. Huh. So look at this calculation, and my opponent, and even if you don't think your opponent's going to play a move like this, you have to consider it. Knight d2, knight c4, and I can't defend both this and this pawn at the same time. Pretty cool tactical trick. So we do have to defend this. How do I want to do it? Uh, it all depends, it all depends. It all deep ends. Instead of going knight d2, we can go here instead, so this is not a tactic, and we're actually setting up a... Uh, a tactic here with so queen e2 we're setting up a tactic discovery winning the knight or no it doesn't even win the knight gotta gotta keep calculating watch okay and this is unfortunate because yeah this is just a free knight and some of you might freak out like oh but if i take that knight he's going to oh actually is that that oh this is not as easy as i thought it would be wow so this seems like a free knight because even if they take check we can go back but they have this fork wow Wow, this is this is fascinating. Takes, queen takes, king back, and this fork. But I feel like we have something concerning the light squares and how weak everything is. I think we could actually sacrifice. Uh, I think we're actually going to be winning a pawn in this situation. So let's go ahead and take. We are not scared about this. It's uh, not a concern. Okay, he takes this way, which is... He should have taken with the queen, so he gets the fork. But we win two pieces for the rook. So this is not good. I assume that he wouldn't play this move because this just simplifies the position into a, a better one for me. Because I have one two pieces for the one rook. And that is good. So you see two pieces, one rook. And even though it's equal on the board, I think it's really hard for black to play from now on. Should we play this? We can force a queen trade like this. And I think we, we can play an end game like this. I think it will be pretty instructive. I was not expecting to take with the bishop because I don't think it's a good move. Uh, but yeah, this is a forced queen trade. We're going to... Okay, never mind. My opponent does make an attack against my rook. But at all times, you have to look for intermezzos. What can you, what move can you play in between your move? And in this case, we can give a check first, and then we can move our rook later. Okay, he goes here. Of course, let's save our rook. Where to? I mean, it depends. We can actually do a rook lift, and I actually really like this. Hit the queen at the same time, prepare rook b4. And notice how we don't have any back rank weakness. I really like this move. So if we go here, what is my opponent like, most likely going to do with this? But then we go here. Yeah, I think this is just good regardless. Again, we are defending. Rook e4 saves the rook, attacks the queen, and protect. I mean, it does three things at once. It prepares the forklift, the forklift, the rook lift. The rook lift, it attacks the queen, it saves my rook. It's just so perfect. And then we're going to get this, and the game is practically going to be over. But we still have to be diligent, because... If we go rook b4 right now, we fall for... Actually, we don't fall for anything. And I'll show you why we don't, right? It doesn't work. Here, here. Yeah, we're good. So you might be notice, noticing this check and you might be a little bit scared, but I would not be scared about this check. I don't think it's concerning. Why? Well, we can block it. We can block it with the knight. Our opponent unfortunately doesn't see that we can block it with the knight. He should have played a defensive move here instead of doing that, but now we're going to have a multitude of checks that win us the game. And... This is another example of not all checks are good. In this case, when my opponent gives a check and that we go here, now they're, now this is a big threat. The checks that we're about to give in this position are going to end the game. And his opponent, my opponent's queen is all the way over here. If it was maybe a little bit closer to their king or was participating in the defense, it would be able to maybe, you know, it's still losing, but they would have a better chance at being okay. Okay, here we just, I mean, there's multiple ways to win, but... There's a, I think there's a clear checkmate on the board here. There's a check, and 
the king literally has zero places to go. They cannot block with anything, so I believe that this is checkmate. So good game to my opponent. Yeah, and this is why you can't trade off two... Uh, so we'll, we'll talk about two little lessons here. In this position, when my opponent decided that this was a good trade, yeah, they took, and then they took here, and this was cons this was weird to me, because I thought they would play, taking with their queen at least, so they can get this fork afterwards, uh, taking with the queen, and then you have pawn to f5. I think this was a better try at trying to win, because this is a fork, and then I have to move, and you get in a good attack, you get your rooks in, but... Um, knight here. Maybe I should have talked about the fact that he had this fork, but I was not concerned giving up two pieces. Uh, sorry, giving up a rook for two pieces. So this was not any of my concern. Remember, don't go here and allow them any d disgusting discoveries. This is unnecessary. We have to take with our king. Our king's wide open. We're still fine, but no need. Now yeah, we go here, give the check, and uh, white is just clearly better in this position. We take back. We're up two pieces. Uh, and I thought this was a clever move to try and get the queen trade. It, it was a forced queen trade. Because if you do not take, then we take the pawn, of course. And, yeah, we took, went here. Again, not concerned about this. You see, you have to look at things like this. Here. Now, if I blocked with the queen, I think that wouldn't be the best. We're still winning because we have this discovery, which is nasty. Uh, and we have two pieces. You know, after takes and takes, we're still, we're still looking very good. But I like the fact that our queen... You know, we, we block with the knight. I like the fact that, you know, this knight's not doing much in the equation. So once the queen moves or whatever happens, uh, we're just going to have a beautiful checkmate. That being said, let's go on to the next game, 1005. All right, we have the white pieces again. E4 and knight C3 playing the Vienna game. And perfect, we get knight F... Oh, sorry, knight F6, and we are able to go for the Vienna gambit. So this is the Vienna game. This is the Vienna gambit. The difference is we're gambiting a pawn in this line. Sometimes you don't get to gambit this pawn. And our opponent accepts, uh, which is a, is a slight inaccuracy because we can push the pawn to e5 and kick away the knight. And my opponent has a few moves that are reasonable. They can either move their knight back or they can bring their queen here pinning the pawn. We'll talk about, you know, what to do in each of those situations. But let's talk about the fact that this knight actually has no squares to go to. There are no squares to go to. Even... Yeah, in this situation, my opponent doesn't even get uh, to have a check, which he probably would like to have, because that would at least mean... I, so, okay, we're, we're already up a piece, so we're winning the game. That's how the Vienna game goes. Now, if my opponent would, were to bring their knights back, here we would be playing normal moves, make sure to play knight f3 after they move their knight back, because this queen check is disgusting. In this case, we can take, and there is no queen check. So, yeah, I have a lot of... A lot of options here. Okay, I don't think it really matters, but I mean, let's be let's be reasonable here. Where do we want to go? We want to go back here probably. This is not appetizing because they get a tempo against their queen. And this is not appetizing because it hangs their queen. So I'm not thinking of any horizontal moves. I'm thinking of diagonal moves. This, again, don't want to be in the bishop's sight. So that leaves us two places. And I'm thinking we go here. Nicer. I mean, it also blocks the knight, but it doesn't matter that we're blocking the knight because we're up a knight uh you know you can consider little things like this like oh the queen is blocking the knight here but in this case it really does not matter because yeah my opponent gives a check but unfortunately we unfortunately this doesn't work in this case because our queen is actually def helping defender king uh so we can just push the pawn and uh we can take we take we are defending the rook with our queen we could have also taken with the queen but then they have a check and that's just there's no need to allow that. Okay, let's stay vigilant because our opponent still has threats. They're trying to win a pawn. And you might let this game slip by you if you start to uh, give in to your opponent's threats. Here, there's a there's a good threat. There's pawn takes, and then they win another pawn. So we shouldn't be, uh, you know, we shouldn't fall asleep at the wheel, as uh, Daniel Naraditsky says. Okay, we have an option. We have some options here. Uh, what I always like to advocate for is developing whilst also uh, defending, or like getting two tasks done at once. In this case, okay, an opponent opens up their king. We are very happy to open up their king if they are willing to do so, uh, because our king is going to be castled on the next move, and 
we're going to be able to get all sorts of tactics with this. So uh, let's let's calculate because it's important to calculate this. You're thinking, oh, I can move the bishop anywhere. I can go here, attack the bishop. He can't take back because I have this. But wait a second. We bring the bishop here, here, and then we pin the queen to the king. But he has this weird move, knight to knight to e5, and it blocks the rook. And you're like, okay, but I just take. And also, this is a check, so we're, we're not even really that concerned about it. But, okay. You know, I am yapping here. Let's just play what's on the board. Basically, there is no good way to really move our bishop things at the same time now i feel like i don't want to let my opponent castle i feel like this is of utmost importance that is something that i'm, I'm really considering here i'm not going to take there's no point in taking yet but also takes check takes this is this is only really interesting okay let's bring our rook over to e1 and yeah we do let our opponent uh castle but we do have a multitude of discoveries. We also have a, an open file against the king, which I'm actually really looking forward to. Remember, don't go here and try to discovery attack the king because that doesn't work. Just making sure everything's good. Yeah, let's go here. Let's bring your knights into the game. Connect the rooks. Bring the knights in, also defending the pawn. So we're going to probably try and go for some trades on the board. Maybe go for an attack. What is my opponent most likely going to do? Trade off? Trying to trade off. So I know a lot of people would uh, trade it off, and it's completely fine, you're winning, but I don't see any reason why we should. We could also just take here and push our pawn like this. Cut off the bishop, probably this, but then we take, so the bishop has to go back. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and go for an all-out attack. We're going to bring our bishop back, just to its normal square, and we're going to try to attack my opponent's king. Uh, either that or trade off all the pieces like this. Really, either way work. Either way, sorry. Either way works. Either. Either way works. Here. Uh, yeah, okay. This is important to notice. Our bishop is currently hanging, but we have a nice move that solves two issues at once. We can trade off some pieces and also defend. Notice how our queen, our knight, and our bishop are defending this knight. There's no, you know, there's nothing to worry about on that front, I believe. Yeah, so... Now, it's good to notice that our knight is pinned, though. Our knight cannot move because there is a check uh, winning the rook for free. So that's one downside of this move, but uh, I think the I think it outweighs... Every, I think everything outweighs everything else. I'm thinking about playing something like this soon. Oh, wow. You see? And that's where it comes into. Our opponent is utilizing this pin, which uh, props to him. I didn't even see this. Uh... Of course, we can probably we can take, but uh, we don't need to allow any unnecessary action. Here, again, we're still not worried about that capture. Uh, we can set an attack, so let's calculate this. We go here. My opponent has to go here or here. Here. There, there. Yeah, so, of course, if we take, we lose the rook. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking about some moves. Actually, wait a second. No, this just wins the game. Never mind. Okay. Well, actually, never mind. He can actually take with check first. Oh, wait, but then I go here. Okay, no, no, no. I think this is... I think he's losing, though. Because we are... Now the knight is actually... Uh, well, it's iffy. This is actually... This is going to get very interesting. For for a second, I thought this knight was hanging. Okay, what is that? Okay, I mean, that is an attack against my king. If we take... Uh, they take our queen. Not concerned. I'm not uh, thrilled about that. I don't want that to happen. Okay, but this is a nice move. Double attack against the knight, against the rook, and that will be a forced trade. So yeah, we did slip, let it slip just a bit, but uh, I think my opponent's best move is most likely either to trade the queens, but even then, I mean, it's there's really no good move here. It's unfortunate. Maybe some type of bishop here at some point could work. We do have a lot of pieces guarding this. I mean, we have one, we have one, two, three pieces, so we're not really concerned about the pin that much. And there's no pawn here that can kick away this knight, so... Yeah, and it's, it's kind of funny that I'm, like, really... I guess it's not funny, but I am really am taking these opponents seriously, even though I could play, really, a multitude of moves and I'll be completely fine. I'm taking them seriously and acting like this is a normal game because I want you... Because I'm basically trying to teach you guys, and I want you guys to take it seriously when you play games. Uh, we can take first, but there's no point in giving... Uh, takes, takes here. Okay, well, there's actually a concern there. Oh, there's actually a concern. Uh, but then I go here, and I'm completely fine. 
No, I don't see it. Okay, I think we take back with the rook. We can also take with the pawn, but then our rook is kind of offside. So we're going to take, and uh, we'll see what my opponent takes with. I'm also noticing that I was concerned about takes, takes, rook here, and when I move my bishop, I have a check, but I'm forgetting that uh, I don't have to move my bishop. Yeah, my opponent goes there, which is yielding the... Uh, okay, but that's just bad, right? So I want to go here and start attacking. I go here, my opponent is forced to go here. We push our pawn, and they cannot take because of check. Check, check, here. Probably takes, 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 takes. No, I think this is good regardless. We should just play it. Let's attack the h7 pawn. I'm calculating this. Pawn forward. They cannot take because we have check, uh, forcing a bunch of trades on the board. Now, what this pass pawn could get a little bit iffy. So I should take in consideration that after this, this, okay, but the opponent just moves. So we just take, pretty simple. Okay, uh, that's a bit strange. Uh, okay, uh, I was about to give a check, but I think we just have a free pawn here because of the pin on the king. The king is on e7 and the pawn is pinned because it cannot take given the fact that a rook would take the king, which is illegal in chess. Uh, let's see, here, again, still pinned, okay. I'm not even really calculating this, but I think getting our rooks more active on open files is going to lead us to a win. Yeah, and our opponent is just uh, developing their king, I like to say, which is interesting. We have a lot of options. We have a lot of options. Okay, our bishop is hanging. We have to deal with that. Check takes. I don't see anything uh, that exciting on that front. Now takes, take, oh, now takes, rook takes, check, wins us the rook, actually. So we can take this pawn for free, and after check... We have a check winning us the rook. So I think, I believe this is a free pawn. The king cannot take because it would be in check. And of course, we give a check and we pick off the rook. So just using little tactics like that to really just fin finish off the game. So even though we're only up a piece, it's good to like practice these habits. Okay, let's take it. We can take with either. What do you, what do I think is the best? I like the fact that there might be a checkmate here with the knight concerning the knight. Also, this is fine. Actually, I'm just going to go here. Don't overcomplicate it. Especially, you know, we have a minute left on our clock. Okay, there's checks on the board. We have to watch out for those. Do, 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 do. Now, check here, check. Doesn't work. So, check here, check here, check up. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't really see anything. I mean, we have a minute left, so let's just play it simply. Let's stop any checks from happening. And... Let's play it like that. Okay, that's actually a good move, I guess. No, it's not. Oh, I guess it is. Okay, let's just play it like this. We need to uh, play a little bit quicker. Okay, let's make sure that after any checks, we're okay. Just want to make sure, like, uh, what do you call it? Insurance. You know, check, we go up. We have 53 seconds, so we will probably play a little bit quicker, but there's really just no, uh, there's nothing that my opponent can do. In this case, I think we can go check and then here, and we win. Unless he goes here. Check. Hmm. Okay. What's the best way to finish this off? Uh, let's go ahead. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, let's go here. And just try to simplify. We're hitting the rook. We're bringing the knight in. Yep, takes. And if they take the pawn, of course, we give a skewer on this. Maybe I missed the mate, but... Let's simplify, we're down, we're 27 seconds, so we go here, I'm pre-moving because I'm going a little bit quicker, which is a realistic scenario. Takes, and we're going to be trying to win these pawns, and this is going to be a guaranteed pawn win, no matter what my opponent does. Let's take it. Uh, let's go, I mean, yeah, bring your king forward. And... Probably, okay, he goes there, which I don't think he should have done. That pawn was uh, kind of well-placed. I don't know if it's well-placed, but yeah. Let's go here. Uh, we can actually go for a rook checkmate. I'll do it in 13 seconds, so let's play it. Okay. Actually, we have 8 seconds. I want to teach good habits. Let me make a queen. I mean, you could go for the rook checkmate, but there's really no reason to try and do it. Yeah. And this is a guaranteed checkmate. Good game. 
trying to show off there at the end with a book checkmate, which is completely unnecessary. You can just make another queen. Want to teach good habits. Don't You don't need to go for anything too flashy. You can start being flashy when you're Hikaru. And then you can start to show off when you're you know, world champion and stuff like that. But if you're trying to win games at this ELO range, don't be flashy. Just win the game, get a queen. And that'll be simple. Anyways, I think that will do for this video at 1000 ELO. And... Again, if you liked the video, then leave a like on the video, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.